Howdy folks, it's a week before Christmas, so this is a quick update. There won't be as many updates during this week, but stay tuned anyway because I'll probably do a few videos and if you'd like to keep abreast of what I'm thinking and what the market might be doing, consider subscribing to the channel and make sure you press the notification bell so that you'll see my videos when they come out. So having said all that, let's have a look at natural gas and we'll go across the tabs from right to left today. So we'll start at the commodities and natural gas is doing quite well actually, surprisingly well holding up above that support we talked about a few days ago, and now moving up above the top channel line, which is excellent news. But we do have the 20 and the 200 day moving averages right above us, just at around about 2.63. We're now at 2.56. So we've made some good progress from around 2.2. And we're looking for a move and close above these two moving averages, the 20, which is the green one, and the 200, which is the purple one. And then a move up back up to the 2.8 level. This, this key green line at the 280 level, there's a swing low there, the 100 period moving average, and it's one of the Fibonacci levels. So We'd like to try and get up there during this week and maybe close above 2.8 and that should open the way for a move back up to the top of this range eventually going into the new year at around 3.6. And perhaps we'll even move up into the $4 region at some stage early in the year. So that's how we're playing natural gas. And if you'd like to have a look at some of my deeper analysis on this, have a look at some of the previous videos. I'll link one at the end of this one. We're going a little light on our positions now as we approach the end of the year. So I'm not going to be opening too many new positions. We have that one on natural gas. We also have a short position on London Cocoa Futures. And that's just holding up at this level at the moment. Still looks like a topping formation to me. I'm a little surprised we didn't manage to follow through with this move down after breaking down below those lows. We gapped up the following week and we've remained at those levels ever since. I still think there's a really good chance for London Cocoa Futures to reach the big 3000 level, 3000, and that's somewhere below us around here at this last swing low. We'll continue to monitor that as we progress towards Christmas. We closed all our sugar shorts a week or two ago. We took a good profit on that. We have nothing on soya, wheat, corn, or WTI. And I think we'll be sort of slowing down on those commodities as the year goes on. A couple of trades on this screen. We're constantly monitoring the US 10-year yield. I put up a tweet on that yesterday. Please go and have a look at X and have a look at my tweet on that and what I think this might do. And this will affect the way the US dollar trades. I'm thinking we may get a bit of a bounce in the US dollar, a bit of a recovery. But we're right at support on the US 10-year yield. It's the 61.8% Fibonacci. We're below all the moving averages and we've had a moving average crossover, which is pretty bearish. But we we do need a recovery. There's been a massive move from 5% down to just below 4%. It's about a 25% drop. So I think we probably need a little bit of a bounce. And if this does bounce up a bit, it may not actually, it may carry on to the next FIB, the 786. And that's all the way down at 3.6%. That's not beyond the realms of possibility at all. So we'll be keeping a very close eye on this one. We're short on Bitcoin. Here's my little demo account. This is a live account, real money, but it's here for purposes of illustration only. You can see we're short from that level there. That's at around about 42,800 and we're aiming for 38,800, which is this green line, which is the bottom of that gap. Now, people have told me this is not a proper gap because this is a continuously traded instrument. That is true, but on my broker, I do get day gaps. And even though this market has been trading during this time when my broker was not, it's definitely a thinner period of activity. And although it may not be a real gap per se, it's definitely the start of a sort of volume vacuum over here as we surged higher and left a lot of traders behind. So I think we could get to the bottom of that sort of perceived gap around about 38,800. And it's also just above this area of consolidation here. So we'll wait to see what happens. Our stops are at break even on that one. We also have a small position on the US 30, the Dow Jones. You can see the price of our entry there at 3735730. This is an incredibly overbought chart. We've reached new highs. We're just below this Fibonacci extension, but we have had seven weeks in a row of upward movement. There's the seven count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's very often a reversal point. And when you get to eight and nine and all the way up to 13, the chances of reversal become greater and greater. It's incredibly overbought across all the time frames. whether you look at one hour, four hours, one day, one week, as we are at the moment, they're all incredibly overbought. And in the longer term picture, we're well above that previous all-time high. A lot will depend now on what goes on with the dollar and the Fed and the various economic numbers that come out, including things like housing, retail sales, credit card expenditure, housing, industrial production, GDP, inflation. I'm reading these out very slowly and compressing them, but you're getting the idea. I'm trying to think of them all at the same time. So even though we've made new highs on the Dow, we haven't made new highs on the S&P and the NASDAQ. Both of those are pretty close to their all-time highs. This one's broken above the all-time high. And quite often when stocks break to new all-time highs, when we're looking into the mouth and the jaws of a potential recession, sometimes these breaks to new highs can actually be breaks to new reversal points and the market may form a top. Whatever the case is, we're short on this one. We'll wait to see how that pans out. We have a very small risk on this trade, but there's a decent upside. We could get all the way down to, let's say, 36,000. And if we have actually made a long-term top in the stock market on this particular index, the US 30, 
and perhaps the others are to follow, then we could see a much, much deeper correction in the stock markets. If that does ta- transpire, then we'll continue to look to sell on rallies next week. However, if this market carries on moving higher during the rest of this year and into next year, we'll just continue to look to buy on dips. Right now, however, I'm just trading these swings to try and get a little bit of profit from the pullbacks, but we may be switching to long a little later as this year closes out and we move into next year. Just very briefly, my view on gold. I did quite a long video on gold recently. I think this big spike up to new all-time highs recently was a clearing out process, and I think we've now made space. I use the analogy of that rope with the explosives that they use in the army to clear minefields, and they shoot this rope out 100 yards. It explodes everything around at 10 yards in each side and creates a path forward for the vehicles and the troops to move forward. I think we've seen the same thing here on gold and this projection out to new all-time highs was a bit like clearing that path. If I switch this to the weekly chart and I pointed this out on X as well, the time period, the distance in time between these all-time highs has gradually, in fact that's not the right word, quite dramatically been reducing. So we had something like 17 months and then maybe 12, I can't remember the numbers, and then seven months until this last move up through that level at about 2075. So the time period between these moves to new highs has been decreasing, indicating a surge of momentum and a willingness for this market to probe up through that level and perhaps remain above it this time and perhaps close above 2100, let's say. So we remain long and gold, and I think any dips are good opportunities to buy. Notwithstanding the fact we could get all the way down to this red channel, this is the original breakout channel, and sometimes, just sometimes, we've got to test the channel from the top side again, and that would actually take us below the breakout level, but that's okay. We've got another rising channel, this much broader, longer term channel rising up here, and we've got a confidence where these two lines meet. It also happens to be the 78.6% Fibonacci. So we've got a super powerful level of support here. Also, this is a previous double bottom, a swing low double bottom. So if the market does move down, this will be a natural area for us to target to look to buy. And that's around 1,880. With a bit of luck, however, we won't have to do that and we'll carry on moving up from here. So we're long on gold. We're not trading silver, copper, and we are long on URA. Once again, have a look at some of the previous videos. We're looking for this to steadily and gradually move higher. And our target on URA is a break above 30, this recent high, and then a move up into 35 and then 40 and then 50 and even 60 and 70 and higher as the demand for uranium picks up. I think it could be a slow and gradual process though. I'm not expecting any massive great surges like we saw recently. I think we can now settle down into a steadier and more stable pattern of growth. Going across the stocks, well, nothing really to say that I haven't already said. We're short on the NASDAQ as we are short on the US 30 or the Dow Jones. Don't have a position on NVIDIA. We took some profit on that. We closed the rest at break even. And I'll be looking to sell NVIDIA, Apple, Tesla, Microsoft, perhaps some of those stock names a little bit later on. But for the moment, I think we've got enough on our plate with short NASDAQ and short US 30. How these stock markets will play out into the rest of this year and into next year, who knows? It's a really, really difficult situation. We've seen the Fed sort of pivot in terms of their language, although they are saying that we may have to hold rates higher for longer. But we're also seeing very mixed economic signals, strong headwinds in some areas, and then also particularly good numbers in other areas, like, for example, jobs and retail sales last week looking pretty buoyant. So it's a very confused market, and I think equally positioned both long and short. And the way this market goes is really up for grabs. Probably the most uncertain period I've come across for a very long time. Are we going to get a continuation of the Christmas, so-called Christmas rally into the end of the year? Or have we seen enough? Are we going to see new all-time highs on NASDAQ and S&P? Or are we going to fall just short of the current all-time highs? Time will tell. We'll find out soon enough. And then going across to currencies, we've closed a massive short position on dollar yen recently for a very, very decent profit. We also closed the euro after this move up. We took some profit on the euro longs there but we're now flat across the board on all currency pairs, looking for the euro to dip down a bit further, perhaps the pound as well, and looking for the dollar yen to rally back up into some of these moving averages and these support and resistance lines above us. But for now, we have no positions on currencies. And that's it for now, folks. Enjoy the rest of this week. Good luck if you're still trading. And if I don't speak to you soon, if you're not tuned in for any other videos I might do, have a fantastic Christmas. And I shall see you next year, 2024. I think it's going to be a potentially difficult, but super interesting year. I think there's going to be a lot of calamity, a lot of chaos, and a lot of volatility, not only in the financial markets, but politically and globally as well. Take care. Speak to you soon.